Let's focus a little bit on tobacco and drug use. And I'm going to talk about sort of tobacco second. I think it's a really significant conversation that we're going to have. And I think we'll, we'll, we'll kind of <coughs> explore some interesting points there. Um, I'm asked to teach you, um, if, we, if we focus on drugs for a second, and by the way, we, when we talk about drugs, I'm, we are talking about some notion of illegal drugs here, not necessarily talking about taking an aspirin or, 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 or even to an extent drinking a glass of beer, although I, I do completely accept that... Um, alcohol is a drug but we're talking about sort of the the illegal utilization of, of substances okay so that's what just to be clear that's why i'm talking about we we want to ask this question of why some people do so why some people do take drugs the first thing i would say to you is i i honestly don't know um I, I would imagine it's very personal and different for each individual. Though there's probably themes, and there's certain there's certain themes that I'd like to draw your attention to. The first one is people do it for recreation. Okay, so it's deemed to be a good time. It's deemed to be something to experiment with. People, for recreational reasons, will perhaps take a, an illegal drug of some kind, and they will experience that kind of some notion of recreation. Okay, so that might be one reason or one theme of reasons why people might take a drug. Secondly, there might be sort of more negative aspects of this. I'm not saying I'm not saying that take drugs is ever pos is ever positive, but there might be relationships with things like mental health. I'm particularly talking about stress. Um, particularly talking about um, I'm particularly talking about things like depression. Okay, um, these might be reasons why some people might choose to take illegal substances. Part of that, and linking off to, from that, is the notion of what we'd call escapism. Drugs, in their broader sense, have the capacity to encourage people to forget or dilute that which they're experiencing in the real world, and therefore they provide a notion of escapism. So I think that's probably a theme for why some people take drugs. And finally, oh, sorry, I actually got two more points. We've got the notion of peer pressure. Now, I wasn't sure how to write this point, but I, I guess because other people are around you doing it is probably quite a typical reason why someone themselves might experiment with or begin to take drugs because other people in their vicinity are doing that. So that would seem to be relevant. And the last one links that very, very closely. And it's the notion of access. And let's be clear, without drugs present and available, people wouldn't take them. Therefore, the access and availability of a drug is one of the core reasons why some people would take it and perhaps these other factors then combine with that now i want to be clear here i've said this in a couple of videos recently whether it's to do with mental health or coping strategies these are things i do not consider myself an expert on this i'm reporting to you some of the themes that i believe are, are relevant within this conversation i think it's one of those things that needs thought it needs uh, reflection it needs discussion it needs teacher input and hopefully i can be a small contributing factor in that what I do want to spend a little bit more time on is the notion of smoking. Now, what I've got here, uh, the statistics, and notice here that the statistics end in 2015. This was the most recent data I could find. By the way, I'm recording this in 2020. By the way, right at the end of the COVID pandemic and lockdown, it's been a remarkable few months. But nevertheless, this is what we're finding uh, with a trend to do with smoking in the United Kingdom. Now, I'll specifically focus on Northern Ireland. Since 2010, the trend for smoking in the UK is decreasing okay so that's what we're finding as a trend so we could say the trend is down okay in the uk trend down this is for smoking cigarettes by the way the trend in the uk is down now i don't know whether people who are smoking less are smoking other things or not smoking at all i'm not aware of that but people overall in the uk are smoking less however if we look at the statistics for northern ireland these statistics are relatively consistent in fact you could even argue there's a slight increase in people smoking cigarettes in Northern Ireland specifically. Now, I was reading just before this, and as of right now, there's 23% of people in Northern Ireland, these are adults, who regularly smoke cigarettes. So that is approximately one in four people. So one in four adults are to some degree, <coughs> excuse me, regularly smoking uh, cigarettes. Now, of course, we've got to say that's a worrying uh, a worrying statistic. It's much lower, for example, in England, it's 19%. Uh, Scotland is the nearest with 22%. Now, what I want to address with you here is I want to talk to you about the negative, the negative effects. And I am, to, I want to be clear here, I am talking about smoking um, something along the lines of cigarettes, 
which is a, a spelling I always feel I'm going to get wrong. I think it's single R double T like that. Cigarettes. Now I, I am again. I'm not qualified to tell you how much of this relates to vaping, to e-cigarettes, to uh, to cigars, to other things. I am specifically talking to you about the smoking of cigarettes. Um, so these are some negative effects that you should be aware of. Okay. So the first one, um, the first one is that people might experience. Um, sort of the, a notion of decreased mental health okay so people might experience slightly less healthy minds and thinking we might anticipate that people will have decreases or poorer circulation so thinking about the vascular system you know the the blood vessels people might experience something like atheroma okay now just to remind you what an atheroma is if, if this is our blood vessel here blood vessel i've got here and we've got some blood firing its way along this blood vessel. Atheromas are these plaque deposits on the side of that, um, or, or these plaque deposits that are on, uh, that, that, that sort of build up in the walls of, of arteries and arterioles. And of course, what they do is they increase blood pressure by increasing resistance, and these can be quite nasty. Now, these can lead to a condition, there's actually a couple of conditions in this family, but one of them is called arteriosclerosis, where these. Um, uh, these, uh, sorry, I've just, let me get this correct. Atheroma leads to atherosclerosis, which is where we get these plaque deposits. And arteriosclerosis is slightly different. It's where the actual wall of the blood vessel kind of, let me do a different color, it kind of hardens in these areas here and becomes less and less elastic. And that's called arteriosclerosis. Both of these are pretty dangerous and pretty negative. Um, People could experience a decrease in brain function, particularly around memory, um, not particularly pleasant. Obviously, let's take this further. People could obviously experience lung disease. Okay, lung disease, I mean, this is a clear relationship, of course, with, uh, with cigarettes, but with lung disease, we might be talking about things like COPD, that is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Something like chronic bronchitis would be an example of this. People might experience emphysema, which is irreversible damage to the lung tissue itself. People might develop lung cancer. I don't want to get sort of heavy in here as we're already a little bit heavy, but I've had family members of mine die directly from lung cancer um, as a result of smoking. And we I mentioned this one already. People might experience things like chronic bronchitis, but I would consider that to be an example of a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Let's take things further. Um, people would have a increased, that's an up arrow by the way, risk of CHD. So coronary heart disease is much more likely, we've already seen why. Um, people would also experience a decrease in appetite. I mean, people who smoke tell me this is actually one of the reasons they do smoke, because they eat less, which is kind of an interesting uh, thing. I have no idea whether it works or not, but people have told me that. I have a sister-in-law who's told me that before. Um, we also have the negative effect, which is addiction. Okay, so addiction is, of course, a problem for people. And two further points. People, I mean, I guess with with these ones, anti-social behavior. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. The anti-social behavior, I've never related to cigarettes. I'll come back to that point in a second. But anti-social behavior might be relevant. And finally, if I just get all the way over here, people would experience a decrease down arrow in physical performance in things like sport and physical activity, of course, especially because of some of the health implications. The point I would make to you here is, let me just draw that across. The point I would make to you here is I think we have to be quite specific and say, look, some of these, let's, let's, take, uh, let's take a decreased circulation, let's take lung disease, let's take decrease, increased risk of coronary heart disease, decreased appetite, addiction. Uh, these things relate directly to um, smoking cigarettes, right? But this, uh, this, uh, this, this definitely relates to cigarettes. These could be related to drug use in more general terms, okay? So I think that's what we've got presented uh, with us. But just a reminder, really, on that tobacco data, I think it's worth saying here is that we've got Northern Ireland is the highest place in the UK or the place in the UK with the highest incidence of smoking. And um, it's it's got a, a steady run upward trend compared to the rest of the UK, which has got a downward trend. Thanks.